All right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at the Dofer module pictured here in front of us, the A121 multi-mode filter. We're going to be looking at some of the basic features about what makes this unique um, as compared to a few other filters. And then later on in a couple of the other video segments, we're going to be listening to some sound examples and maybe even see some oscilloscope views of what's happening when you filter. So let's jump right into the basic segment and uh, talk A121. First thing you probably want to know is that this filter is a minus 12 decibels per octave filter, uh, just as kind of a reference point. There are a lot of other ty types of filters out there, minus 48 decibel filters, uh, minus 24. Uh, this one, as we said before, minus 12 decibels per octave. So we'll be hearing what that sounds like a little bit later. But we're going to be talking first about the filter types that are available here on the front of the filter. Now, these are all going to be available to you simultaneously. So if you want to output all four of these at once, you can uh, over into the mixer and get a very interesting mix or blend of all of those. Uh, but let's talk about what each one of these is actually for or does and then we'll go a little further into some of the other controls that are available to you here. Um, starting at the bottom with our low pass, that's kind of the uh, standard bread and butter type filter that we've heard in the past. Um, this low pass is actually going to filter high frequencies and pass low frequencies. Now, the frequencies it passes um, or cuts are going to be determined by the cutoff right here. Now this is important because it's going to come into play a little later when we talk these other filters too. But cutoff is going to always control the uh, where it cuts off, so to speak. I guess that's actually easier than I thought. Um, at any rate, that's low pass. Uh, the one that's sort of paired with that or very similar to it, except kind of the flip side of that, is going to be the high pass, which is two, two uh, little ports up. Uh, the high pass is actually going to filter low frequencies and pass high frequencies as determined by the cutoff. So there you go with the high pass. Now the next two are also somewhat related. Uh, so let's talk band pass first. Uh, the band pass is actually going to cut above and below the cutoff point as set here. Um, and it's only going to allow a small band of frequencies to pass. So if you were actually looking at it, uh, it would look sort of like a little mountain or a hill. Um, and that hill would actually be the frequencies that would be passing up or through, I guess is another way to think of it. Now that's bandpass. Immediately above that or two above it, the notch filter is related to that one as well, except it's the opposite of the bandpass. Um, with this one, it's going to actually pass what's above and below the cutoff frequency. And it's going to cut the frequencies that are a small notch in the middle. So last time we were talking bandpass, you know, and how it's kind of a hill. And what's inside the hill is what the frequencies are that are passing. But um, the notch is actually going to be the opposite. So it's almost like a, a U shape, uh, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, a little later on when we start hearing these examples, you should get a little bit better of an idea, but just so you have some kind of reference point, that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, so again, low pass, high pass, somewhat related to each other, uh, sort of mirror images of each other, and then band and notch related. So that might be a good way to uh, sort of remember it or think about it. Now, in the next column, we're going to be talking kind of what some of these ports do for you, as well as some of the controls over here. Now, these first two are fairly straightforward. We've seen these in almost every Dofer module that we've looked at in the past. You have a standard audio input. This is going to be where you input the sound source that you want to filter. And then immediately to the right of that, you have a control to uh, adjust how much signal comes into your filter. So pretty straightforward. Immediately below that, you have the cutoff frequency, which we said again, it's going to control what frequencies come in and what frequencies come out from our different filter types. To the left of that, 
we have a jack labeled FCV number one. Now there's actually two of these, FCV1 and FCV2. Uh, these are going to be ports to modulate the cutoff of the frequency of the filter. Now the first one is fairly straightforward. It's going to go um, right into here. And whatever modulation signal you have in there is what you get here. Now the one immediately below it you have actually a control for how much of the modulation signal patched into here is going to go up to the cutoff. Um, standard DOFR convention we've talked about in the past, if you have two CV sources patched in here, then you're going to get the sum of the two. The sum of that two CV sources is then going to go to the cutoff of the frequency of the, of the filter. So. Hopefully that, that was pretty clear. We've talked about that before, so if you've seen any of the other videos, uh, you may be saying to yourself, wow, I've heard this before. But uh, hopefully each time it sounds a little bit different and uh, maybe makes things just a little more clear. At any rate, that's those two. Um, the only other thing I guess worth mentioning in this one, which uh, I don't think that we've seen in the past, is that these jacks are actually going to function very much like you'd have on the A110. That is, they can track one volt per octave. And we'll be hearing that a little bit later because you can actually play this filter like you would a VCO. So these again, calibrated one volt per octave. We'll hear that a little bit later. Um, which brings us to the next ones down. These are also calibrated one volt per octave. Uh, but let's talk about what these are. Labeled QCV1 and QCV2. So these actually relate over to our friend resonance over here. Now resonance is going to allow you to peak uh, the frequencies close to the cutoff of the filter. Um, and then it's sort of abbreviated as the letter Q, which is why you have QCV1 and QCV2. Uh, it'd be fairly uh, long and somewhat obtrusive to write resonance in there. Wouldn't actually fit by the ports, but there you go. So they abbreviated it Q. Uh, not in this specific example, but just historically, somehow it got mentioned as Q. Um, at any rate, as we said before, those are going to track one volt per octave. And then the same rules that we heard above here are going to apply. If you patch a CV source into here, then it's just going to modulate your resonance setting accordingly. If you patch something into the second one, you have a control to adjust how much of the CV patched into here is going to go to the resonance. And then of course it follows that if you have two CV sources patched into here, you get the sum of the two, then going and modulating the resonance of the filter. So there you go. That in a nutshell are the Dofer A121 multimode filter basics. Um, that's going to do it for this segment. In the next segment, we'll be looking a little bit more at some examples of what some of these things sound like, as well as even looking at some oscilloscope views of what this stuff looks like. So please, please stay tuned for that and keep on patching out there.